Hey there, Rod Bergeron here with you once again. And we're continuing looking at ink and specifically ink on watercolor paper. So if you have watched me before, you know I, I use watercolor paper for almost everything. Pretty much every drawing and painting, whether it's watercolor, ink, acrylic, pastel, mixed media, whatever it might be, I do it all on watercolor paper. This particular paper is Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, I use that quite often, mostly because it's available. So some of the things that I've done here is I've, I've added some washes, I've just done some lines. Of course, I'm just doing this for educational purposes. I, I'm, this, isn't, um, this isn't something that I, you know, I hope to put into a show or anything. And this is just practice for me. This is just practice. And that's the way that I want you to approach your artwork all the time. I'm using this Bombay Black India ink. No, Bombay Black does not pay me. I got it all over my hands. Oh, let's do, uh, let's do a little infomercial here, okay? Ink will stain your fingers, okay? Permanently. Well, I shouldn't say permanently. For a long time, all right? A long, long, long time. So what you have to do, where is this ink coming from? I don't even know what I've done here. So um, what you have to do is be very careful with your ink. Okay, don't, um, you know, don't do that. I'm glad that happened on camera though, because uh, uh, people think I'm a little too neat and tidy. But what I wanted to talk to you today about was doing some hatching and some cross hatching with just a regular uh, just a rather uh, nib pen tip and if you remember this it splits to make a thicker line and if you drag it out like that it'll give you just a thin line so just take this stick it in you'll see I only have a little bit on the bottom so if we want to add some depth to our work we can do hatching and cross hatching so um, this is a tree so we're gonna add some curved hatching okay and you can do curved hatching with a nib pen another tree maybe this tree is going the other way you know to give it some curves you know make it look like it's a bit of a curved tree and here's another one all right we want to add some curves to it go back and dip your pen in again Okay, and then the same down here. Maybe down here we want to put in we want to make this a little bit darker. Listen to the sound this makes. I love this sound. Alright, and then if we wanted to make it darker, right? So we could put our lines closer together. To make it darker or we can cross hatch right over top of those to make it even darker depending upon what it is that you want to do and how uh, you know how dark it is in in your little drawing again this is all this is just purely just for me it's all this is just practice Let's say I wanted to make this into a bit of a, a darker puddle, right? So I made those lines fairly close together and I want to make it a little, maybe a little bit more like a, like a puddle, a puddle or a, you know, just a dark patch on the barnyard. I could cross hatch like that. Now, if that's not dark enough, I could go back and cross hatch going the other way. So now I have three different hatching and cross hatching. Hatching is simply parallel lines. Okay, they don't have to be straight. They can be curved. If you're going to do a curved object, like a tree or a bush or something, you're probably going to use curved hatching, right? Cross hatching is simply hatching and then going across in a different direction to make it darker. Now, some people believe 
that you have to go in a 90 degree, uh, completely 90 degrees when you cross hatch. That's not true. You can do any, any amount of different uh, lines going different ways. And you can go back over. Remember we talked about before about how if I don't put any pressure down, I don't split the quill, I get a, a thin line and I get a thick line like that. Well, if you had a large area and you want to do some hatching and fill it in fairly dark, you would have to go back to your inkwell every time, load back up, make a thick line again and again, right? And then come back and make a thick line again and again. Now it doesn't have to be true. You don't have to make a thick line. You can make a thin line and you'll see how those give a variation in the darkness that you're putting on the page. So give that a try with your quill pen. Thin lines, thick lines, curved hatching, curved hatching going different ways, curved hatching, curved cross hatching. Give all those different things a try. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you are currently a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not currently a subscriber, subscriber please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, I'd love to hear from you. So when you give this a try, let me know how you make out. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you again next time.